Thank God. Lord Jesus, that you keep us, Lord, in every waking hour and every sleeping hour, Father, that you keep us. And Lord, that you put a shield, Father, around thy people. Lord, a hedge, God, that will keep them, Lord, in this evil time, Father, that we live. And Lord Jesus, put that hunger and thirst in our hearts anew. Amen. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing, Lord, in me, God, and in others. Amen. Oh, dear Lord, Father, Lord, I have such a hunger desire, Lord, to be completely consumed in thy word. Lord, I know, God, that you are the word robed in flesh. And Lord Jesus, bring us forth in thy likeness. Move, Father, in thy people. Amen. Encourage their hearts. Amen. Strengthen them, Lord, Lord. Amen. Help them, oh God. Yes, Lord. Lord, in this hour. Lord, many, God, are fighting things. Tormenting spirits coming against them, Father. Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I take authority, Father, in your name, Jesus, against every tormenting demon out there, Father. Amen. That's tormenting the ones under the sound of my voice. Amen. Father, drive it back now, right now, in the name of Jesus. And it is so by thy word. Amen. It is so by thy word, Lord. God, Lord, your children, Father. Help us all, Lord, to know what we possess in you and who possesses us. Lord, Paul prayed, Lord, help me to apprehend him that's apprehended me. And Lord, that is my prayer too. Lord Jesus, I desire to get a hold of you, Father. Oh, dear Lord, as you have got a hold of me, Oh, Lord, only you, God, can bring that forth in each of us. God, move by your spirit. Encourage. Amen. Lift up. Amen. Oh, the downtrodden. Amen. Lord, heal the brokenhearted. Yes, Lord. Mend them, oh, God. Hallelujah. Lord, let them know that there's hope in you. There is hope. You are the deliverer. Oh, ye love me. Lord, in thy holy name, Jesus. Lord, in thy holy name, Jesus. Lord, I pray. Lord, stare every heart that's under the sound of my voice. Lord, inspire us, oh God. Lord, to search you out. Lord, to seek after you, Lord, because you are near. Amen. You are near, oh God. Oh, bring forth that true conversion, Lord, in each and every one of your children. Cause them to stand strong in this hour, Father. Lord, in your precious holy name, I pray. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Amen. Oh, the Lord is so good. Amen. The Lord is so good. Oh, I praise him. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Blessed Lord. Blessed Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm going to try to finish up this message today if I can. But I, I just want to recap just a little bit where I left off last weekend on your journey. Our journey. Amen. Each and every one of us have a journey. Amen. That when Jesus saved us and turned our life around, he placed us on his path. A path of righteousness. And we began the journey right there. And because our lives are different and because our personalities are different, and because the calls in our life are different. Each of our journeys are not always the same. Just like we see in Paul. But well, he was Saul before he was called Paul. And then he was the light of Jesus shone on him in such a way that he fell to the ground. Amen. 
His eyes were blinded. And Ananias went to him. But as we learned last week, that Paul prayed and fasted and sought the Lord during that time of blindness. And I want you to really take note of that. In that time of blindness, he mortified and buffeted his flesh. And he sought the Lord. I believe that he sought the Lord. During that time, I mean, my goodness, one day he was seeing, the next he's not seeing. You don't think that would shake your world upside down? Of course it would. Hallelujah. And I believe it gave him time to think of all the times that he destroyed the church. Amen. And how sorrowful he was Amen. of what he did. But you know, he didn't know what he knows now. When he was doing that. And when the Lord told Paul. Saul. That he was going to send Ananias to him. And then when he went to Ananias. And started speaking to him. And letting him know he needed to go to Saul. Of course you know Ananias reasoned with God. There, there for just a minute. He said Lord and he the one that does such and such. And such and such. Hallelujah. Well it don't make no difference. Then the Lord started explaining to Ananias. That he was a chosen vessel. Hallelujah. That was going to go and spread this gospel. Amen. Hallelujah. Far and wide. That would bear his name to the Gentiles. And that would carry forth this gospel. Well there's many out there today. Hallelujah. With great calls in their life. They were born from their mother's womb. To carry forth this gospel. Amen. And God is going to work a work in each of their lives. Hallelujah. In a degree that he can form them. And fashion them. Locking unto himself. Amen. And they will be obedient in that call. And my, 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 you're talking about a deliverance that will come forth. But as we learn, there's a journey that you can take that when you leave point A to go to point B to your destination. That is a journey. You find your map, you find out your directions, the way to go. There's also a journey that you move through stages. In life and also in ministry. And in walk with the Lord. And I want to pick up reading right here. And this is chapter 9 of Acts. And we're going to start at verse 11. I tell you what, we'll start at verse 10. No, I want to start at verse 9. Now this is talking about Saul. <coughs> And he was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. Wouldn't it be nice if everybody said, Lo, I am here, Lord, every time he beckoned us. Well, we need to be sensitive to his call. And when he beckons us like that, we need to go and see what the Lord needs. Even if we're in the midst of a crowd, God can talk to you right in the midst. Amen. You just go off wherever he wants you to go. Amen. Hallelujah in the spirit and hear what he has to say. But he said, and the Lord said unto him, arise and go into the street, which is called straight. And inquire the house of Judas, for one called Saul of Tartus. For behold, he prayeth. See right there, he said, he prayeth, he's seeking me. When you be seeking him, my goodness, he was blind, he could not see. You'd be praying too. Lord, open my eyes and I can see. Lord, show me where I need to go. Lord, teach me what I need to be taught. Amen. And he goes on and it says, And has seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming to him and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. See, the Lord didn't leave him in the darkness. Hallelujah. Lord's really touching my body. Hallelujah. This old mucus and, and stuff that's in my lungs has been trying to really take me under. I tell you what, the devil is a liar. God's been healing my body. My, my, my. I tell you what, I'm going to come out of this thing rejoicing in the Lord. And I tell you what, he is good to us. Sister Pam, can I have those that, uh, tissues right there? Thank you so much. Hallelujah. 
<laughs> and it goes on and it says, Then Adonis answered, Lord, I have heard by many that this man, how evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And here he hath authority for the chief priests to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and the kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. You know, another place Paul says, arm your mind likewise to suffer. We're going to suffer, children of God. I know many don't want to hear that. Oh my goodness, don't tell me I'm going to suffer. But you know, Jesus was playing with us. He said they hated me before they hated you. And because they hate me, why do they hate him? Because of his words. And we carry forth his words, so they're going to hate us too. But I tell you what, you just arm your mind likewise. Hallelujah. Be willing to suffer for a season with God's children. Hallelujah. And I tell you what, you'll rule and reign with him in all his authority in this life and in the life to come. Hallelujah. And Ananias went his way and entered to the house, putting his hands on him, said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in, in the way as thou camest, has sent me that thou mightest receive thy son <coughs> and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Woo! See, the Lord was sending him everything that he needed. He was bringing a true conversion to him. Not only was he changing his life, hallelujah, and washing him through his blood, but he was filling him with the Holy Ghost that he could bring about that full conversion in his life to go forth and carry this gospel in the manner that he should. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales. And he received sight forthwith and arose and was baptized. See, he got up directly and started doing what God wanted him to do. Hallelujah. And to be baptized in the name of Jesus. Amen. So that he would be doing all the word of God before he went. Amen. But listen to what it says right here. And when he had received meat, see the Lord had restored his sight. He had filled him with the Holy Ghost and he had baptized him. Hallelujah. And now he has given him meat and strength for the journey. Woo! Hallelujah. He said he would receive meat and he was strengthened. Then was Saul certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus. And I want you to hear what he did. Did he go off to a seminary school? No. Did he go and get in Bible college? No. Hallelujah. Before he could go preach the gospel. No. Uh -uh. Listen what happened. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues. Straightway. Did he have to sit under leadership for years and years before he could go preach? No. Uh -uh. Hallelujah. Straightway he went and preached the name of Jesus in the synagogues. And that he is the Son of God. He preached Jesus to them. But all that heard him were amazed and said, Is this not he who destroyed them, which called on his, this name in Jerusalem? And came he hither for that intent that he might bring them bound, bound unto the chief priests. You know, you might have your heart set to do one thing. But in your journey there, God can change the whole situation. You know, Saul had went and sought of the priest to give him the authority to go, hallelujah, to the makers and to arrest everyone that he could get his hands on and bring them bound back to the high priest that they might be tortured and put to death for the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. But what I'm wanting us to see <coughs> that in your journey as well, God has been taking you from one level to the next. Amen. As you've been willing to learn, willing to humble, and as 
you have sown his face. Hallelujah. There's one thing about it. God started teaching me in 2004 when he restored my life to him. He started me on a journey right there and he started teaching me. Oh, I had such a hunger and I still do. That hunger is just as alive today as it was then, Sister Pam. My, my. The fire is burning just as bright as it was then. Hallelujah. Because I continually, every day, to seek after him. Because I know, hallelujah, I need that pearl of great price. I value that pearl of great price. I have sold everything to buy that pearl of great price in that field. Amen. Hallelujah. To seek out his name. And to carry his word to a lost and dying generation. In this evil generation. Hallelujah. And in my walk with God. Hallelujah. He has brought me from one stage to the other. Have they been easy? No, they have not. They have been very hard. Very hard. But my goodness, in the turbulence of all those stages, my goodness, he showed me his hand where he kept me every time, Sister Pam. And he moved me up. Moved me up in him. Yeah. Were sometimes some of them long? Yes, they were. And just like at time, I thought, but it was a God's timing for me to be still and not grow right away anymore. Because we got to wait upon the Lord. As we wait upon Him, that's when we mount up with wings. Hallelujah. There's a time of growth and there's a time and space of waiting. And to hear His voice. Hallelujah. And I got upset <laughs> because I, I did not want to become stagnant. And then that's when he showed me the vision Amen. of the wings that he was placing upon me to fly. Hallelujah. And hit the power of his mind. Hallelujah. Is those wings all way out yet? No, they ain't. But they're still growing. Hallelujah. And I tell you what. Woo! I can't wait till they're fully developed. I know you can't wait till yours are fully developed. Hallelujah. You're talking about soaring high. be able to see them. They'll walk among you. And you'll be able to see them and talk to them. Hallelujah. And they'll talk with you. You say, oh, I don't know about that, Sister Brenda. Well, you go ahead. Hallelujah. There's times that God has opened my eyes and let me see. And I have beheld Gabriel and I have beheld Michael, the archangel. Amen. And they have talked to me. Hallelujah. I have seen my Lord Jesus. And he has talked to me. Hallelujah. I tell you. Lord Jesus Christ. He will withhold no good thing from you. He's wanting to give you the kingdom. He's wanting to give you everything in the kingdom. Amen. Hallelujah. You know many they rob their self. Because they allow flesh to take over. In that walk with God. I, I say God help me to mortify the deeds of this flesh. Help me to get on that cross and stay on that cross. Sometimes when we're on that cross, we feel like we're just about gone. Hallelujah. Well, that's what he's wanting to happen. <laughs> but if there's any life left in that flesh a little bit, it wants to hop off real quick and try to save itself. But we need to stay on that cross and let it be completely killed out. Then we'll come forth in his righteousness in the fullness of the stature of the Son of God. Amen. And walk forth. 
forth in him. But let's go on and see what took place. But Saul increased the more in strength. My goodness, he was growing by leaps and bounds. And that's what God does. He causes us to keep growing as we seek for him. Don't you know that Saul started developing a daily walk with him? Hallelujah. Talking to him. Being tuned into his spirit. Then he wanted to know exactly what was going to take place. What was going to happen next. And he was quick to do it. After he knew that it was God. Confounded the Jews which dwelt at the Meccas, proving that this is the very Christ. Amen. Proving that this is the very Christ. Amen. And after that many days were fulfilled, the Jews took counsel to kill him. Amen. You know, the devil probably come to Saul and said, My goodness, what have you got yourself into? Amen. Now they're seeking your life just like you sought the lives of others that spoke the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. But it didn't make no difference. Saul, hallelujah. He had a true transformation take place. It didn't make no difference if they were seeking his life. Hallelujah. All he knew that this man named Jesus had touched his life and totally transformed him and made him a new creature. Hallelujah. And all he wanted to do is tell everybody about that man named Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Were fulfilled, the Jews took counsel to kill him. But their laying, <coughs> excuse me, but their laying awake was known of Saul. You know why it was known of Saul? Because a little bird from heaven come and told Saul, They're seeking to kill you. They're watching at the gates. They're watching to see if you come and go. They're waiting there to grab hold of you, to kill you. Hallelujah. You know God will protect you in this time and nothing going to happen to you until it's time for you to go. Amen. So, when his name was given to him as Paul, I tell you what, he suffered many things in his journey. Shipwreck. Hallelujah. He hungered. Amen. There's time he had much. There's time he lacked. But he said, I found myself to be content in whatever state I find myself in. But my mama, God kept that man alive to go forth to preach this word. And I don't care what the devil tries to attack you with. Hallelujah. God will keep you. You know that for a surety in your, in your spirit. Amen. And you'll see God move every time. Amen. See, then the disciples took him. Oh, let me finish reading that 21st verse. It said, but their laying away was known of Saul. And they watched the gates day and night to kill him. Then the disciples took him by night and let him down by the wall in a basket. <laughs> you know, some people be too proud. Don't let you let me down in no basket down that wall. What if somebody wants to see me? My goodness. Hallelujah. I tell you what, when you're running for your life and when you got people seeking to kill you, you ain't going to make no difference what you're, you're delivered out of in. Hallelujah. So they did put him down in that basket down the wall. Hallelujah. And when Saul was come to Jerusalem, he is said to join himself to the disciples. But they were all afraid of him. And believed not that he was a disciple. Don't you know the devil jumped on every one of them. Said oh my goodness he's just trying to deceive you. He's trying to make you think that he's been converted. But he's not converted. He's just lying in wait to grab a hold of you. And put you in bonds. And, and put you in jail. Amen. Hallelujah. But once Saul proved himself to them. That he was truly converted. My, my, my. They took him in as one of the family. And he went on and he'd done great things. They said, but Barnabas took him. And brought him to the apostles and declared unto them how he had seen the Lord in the way. And that he had spoken to him. And how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. See, Barnabas had heard about it. You know, when you're doing things for God. You don't have to go out and broadcast it. Hallelujah. There's others that's going forth and saying, did you not know how God used that vessel? So and so. How God is moving. How he's touching. How he's delivering. You need to know what God is doing. Amen. 
Praise the Lord, this old flame's coming up. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> but I'm going to get this word out. Hallelujah. But that's a good sign when it's coming up. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I don't let nothing stop me from preaching the gospel. Hallelujah. I just keep it going. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If I have to stop and cough or if I have to stop and, and spit flame out, that's all right. Hallelujah. I'll just keep pressing on. You're going to see me completely healed too by the name of Jesus Christ. He is my deliverer. He's my healer. He's my everything. Hallelujah. And it's the Lord in the way that he has spoken to him and now. He had preached boldly at the Meccas. How he had preached boldly at the Meccas in the name of Jesus. And he was with them coming in and going out at Jerusalem. And he spoke boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus. And disputed against the Grecians. But they went about to slay him. You know, many people, when people were out to kill you, many people say, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I want to walk this way. This is too dangerous. Well, I tell you what, we're fixing to come to a time and place again that we're going to resist nigh unto blood. And it's going to separate the real from the unreal. Because you believe me, you ain't going to have no unreal saying they love Jesus and with no works behind it and no fruit behind it with a gun looking at it. Hallelujah. Ain't no way they're going to do it. Only the real is going to be willing to take a bullet. Only the real is going to be willing for their head to be chopped off. Only the real is going to be willing to give their life and lay it down. Not only in the natural as far as being killed and martyred for Jesus Christ, but they're also already laying it down and mortified. The deeds of the flesh. Amen. And laying down their life and picking up the cross and falling after him. He said if we don't do that, we can't even be his disciples. Amen. Hallelujah. So we got to be found worthy of his name. And he makes us worthy of his name. Hallelujah. And it goes on and it says, Hallelujah. Which when the brethren knew, they brought him down to Sisera and sent him forth to Tarsus. Then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria. And we're edified. What did it just say there? Who found rest for a season? Amen. The churches. Why? The one that sought them was converted. Saul. The one that pursued them and worked hard to destroy them. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Now the churches had a bit of rest. Because <laughs> the one that once sought them now is preaching that name, Jesus. Amen. It said, then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria. And were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost were multiplied. And it came to pass as Peter passed throughout all. Quarters, he came down also to the saints which dreamt at Latia. Now it's going to go on into Peter. But I don't have time to get into Peter's journey. What I want us to do is to go on to uh, Galatians chapter 1. Because I want to show. You know, Paul said that he didn't. Confer with flesh and blood. Immediately he realized that. And he realized that he needed to get something from God. Amen. Hallelujah. Did he go sign up for the Bible college? No. Did he go and ask some man to sit and teach him? No. And believe me, I, we need leadership. But this is an apostle of God that had to get it for himself. Hallelujah. Had to get it for himself. Amen. And the leaders of God, we have to press in. Amen. We have to press in and get from God to care for a shmana to the people. Hallelujah. And I tell you what, I, I believe with all my heart. I said, God, thank you that you carried us into a place that I can start delivering some of this word that you have given unto me. Lord, that it's going to branch us on out, Lord, in the spirit. Amen. That we're going to be able to start growing up in you. Hallelujah. You know, many, they are content to stay babes in Christ. Amen. And walk in it 30 years, 50 years. Amen. Always wanting the bottom. But I tell you what, God's raising up a people that want to go on and grow up. 
that wants the, the meat of the word, that wants to have the strength to go forth in his authority. Hallelujah. The stand strong. And we're going to need it in this hour, children of God. we got to have the strength of God in us to face what we're fixing to face. Is it, this is chapter 1 of Galatians. Paul, an apostle, not a man, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. And all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia. Grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Who gave himself for our sins. That he might deliver us from this present evil world. According to the will of God and our Father. To whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now listen to what Paul is fixing to share with them. Because the Galatians had turned back to the better elements. And turned back to some of their false gods. And were standing steadfast Amen. in what they had been taught. He said, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Man, we, we got wolves in sheep clothing. We've got false prophets. They know when a Christ spirit is out there strong. And it is going trying to pervert whole houses. Trying to captivate silly women. Which is churches. And trying to pull them under their divine. Divine. What I'm talking about. Their divine spirit. It's a spirit that gets a hold of them and causes scales to come across their eyeballs that they cannot see any longer. It is a charming spirit. Amen. And it's also called divine. They divine upon them. And they do charm them. But it's because the people are wanting a smooth gospel. They want their ears to be tickled. Amen. But my goodness, God's got a real. Don't tickle my ears. In fact, if a preacher or pastor or a leader try to tickle their ears too long, they'll be going somewhere else where the word is. <laughs> Only one that that pastor will keep is the unreal. Amen. They want to live in their sin. Amen. They want to shout and do all this in their sin. But you got a people that's wanting to be real. Amen. And it goes on this says, But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you, than that which we have preached unto you, let him be a curse. Paul was even including himself. If anywhere down the line you see that I have swayed from this gospel, don't you follow me. Don't you follow me. I don't care if I or an angel from heaven bring you any other gospel than what I'm laying out before you right now. You let him be a curse and don't listen to it. Amen. Why? Because he was looking out for the welfare of their journey in God. And he said, as we said before, so I say now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you, then that ye have received, let him be a curse. For do I now pursue men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not walk. I should not be the servant of Christ. Amen. You got to be too many leaders trying to please the people in the congregation. Amen. Or please them if they're out on the evangelist field. I'm not saying get out and beat people over the head. That ain't what I'm talking about. You can stand and preach love. I mean truth in love. You can hold that truth in love. But yet you preach a standard and in, in a, a word of instruction. A word of correction. Without killing the people. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And it goes on, it says, For I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after me. Now listen to what he said. He said, For neither I received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. For you have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. And profited in the Jews' religion. Above many my equals in my own nation. 
been more exceedingly zealous in the traditions of my father. That's the reason he went forth killing the ones that were called after the name of Jesus Christ. He had a zeal, but it wasn't according to knowledge. And he had a zeal that he thought that he was killing them and doing God's service. But he was not. He was doing the will of the evil one. But when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace. To do what? To reveal his son in me. To reveal his son in me. See, that's what God's doing. He's revealing the son in us. To the world. To the people. That is that great light that is shined down in our hearts. That is that light that is being produced in our temples. That people can behold and see. That we are Christians. That be quiet because we're Christ-like. Hallelujah. It's the reason that we're called Christians first in any other. It's because people look and behold. And they said, they're like Christ. They're like Jesus. They're coming forth like Him. Amen. That's the reason they were called Christians. Because they're Christ-like. To reveal His Son in me that I might preach Him among the heathen. Immediately. Immediately. I confer not with flesh and blood. And listen to what He said now. He knew that He wasn't fighting against men. And man wasn't fighting against Him. But he knew the ruler, the prince, the prince of darkness, was trying to stop him. And listen to what he said. Did he go join a Bible college? No. And I'm not saying that we don't need to be teached from the Word of God. But you got many out there who say that men and women can't preach unless they go to seminaries. I know Brother Terrell calls them cemeteries. Because <laughs> a lot of times that's what they're producing. Is walking dead men. That's not going forth with an anointing. With a, with a power of deliverance. There is a power of deliverance. In the anointing of God. Hallelujah. When that true anointing gets a hold of you. Hallelujah. It brings forth a true deliverance. Amen. He said. Now that I went up to Jerusalem. To them which were apostles before me. I went into Arabia. And returned. And returned again unto Damascus. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him 15 days. I think he went to Peter. Because Peter was, I believe, the top apostle at that time. Hallelujah. And people looked at him as a leader. <clears throat> And he went to him to reveal what God had revealed to him. And I believe as Peter was sitting there listening, he was probably amazed <laughs> of this man called Saul that is now called Paul. He was probably amazed. My, 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 I know that you didn't get this from me. I know that you have been alone seeking the Lord. Hallelujah, that you've been hearing from the very spirit of, hallelujah, and the spirit of revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And it goes on, it says, But out of the apostles saw I none save James, the Lord's brother. Now the things which I write unto you, behold, before God I lie not. Hallelujah. You know, Paul went forth. My, my, my. And you know, we see, as you read through his epistles, he would share parts of his journey along the way. And really take note of that next time when you're reading through the Word. Start really taking notice of his journeys in God. The things that he faced, the things that he fought up against and what fought up against him. And it will encourage you. Hallelujah. And show you that we all have a journey. And we all need to make sure that we're getting the golden nuggets that God is wanting to give to us through each fiery trial that comes along our way. Amen. Paul walked in one fiery trial after the another. Hallelujah. And you know there was many hard things that God required of him. There's going to be many hard things that God is requiring out of you and I. Hallelujah. And we need to be sure that we hear him and walk in him. I want to turn one more time to 2 Peter. Hallelujah. Then I'm going to share some other verses with you. 
that I'm not going to have you turn to, but I just want to read to you how God's direction is and how He helps us. Hallelujah. And how He gives us guidance. But in our journey, this is what God is teaching us. And this is where He wants us to elevate from one level to the other. Hallelujah. And here it goes. I'm going to start at verse 1. Simon Peter. Second Peter. Chapter 1, verse 1. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ to them that have attained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God our Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through what? The knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord according to his divine power have given unto us all things. Hallelujah. That what? That pertains unto life and godliness. Amen. Through what? The knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. It means pureness. That has called us unto purity. The Bible says, be ye holy for I am holy. Only the pure in heart are going to see God. So what does he call us to first? Purity. Pureness in heart. Pureness in spirit. We all start with that. Then he wants us to do what? Go for but it, let me, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's start at the next verse. Whereby are given unto us exceeding and great precious promises. That by these you might be partakers of the divine nature. What does it mean by that? Be partakers. When you partake of something, hallelujah, that means you're tasting of it. That means you're coming a part of it. It means it's coming a part of you. Amen. So he said that he wanted us what? To be retakers of the divine nature. Having it's what? Escape the corruption that is in the world through what? Lust. What is the, the things of the world? The lust of the eyes? The pride of life? The lust of the heart? The lust of the spirit? Lust of all these things. Lust of the flesh. And if any of these things be in us, then the Spirit of God is not there. The Bible says if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not there. Amen. And he said, and besides this, giving all diligence. What does diligence mean? It means with all care. Be cautious. Be careful. With all care. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? That means that every day when you get up, when you wake up, that you meet, need to be aware of every step that is ordered by God. That you need to be aware of what's taking place in your life. Mm -hmm. What is coming against you. What God is giving you victory over. Hallelujah. And if you feel like that you are, are in a place that is hard to overcome. You start resting assuring him that surely God is going to bring you through. And you move with diligence and care throughout the day. To do what? To protect that pearl of great price. Amen. That lives and abides in you. If you do that, you'll start seeing you. Start increasing God. In the knowledge of God. And you'll get that hunger and thirst in you. Then you're not satisfied until you're digging in the word. And you're digging in prayer. And supplication. And crying out, God, teach me your ways. Lord, teach me your thoughts. Father, I want to learn of you. Lord, I want to choose that good part. Mary chose the good part. Hallelujah. And I tell you what, the more that you do that, you are more mindful that you don't let nothing hinder you. Hallelujah. I love your family, but I've got a more pressing way that i got to go. I love you and I'll help you any way I can, but I've got to press into God. Hallelujah. And I tell you what, when you start doing that, is it going to shake things up? Yes, it is. <laughs> the family will start talking, talking among themselves. Oh, my goodness. What's happening? Oh, what's happening? They're meaning what they say now. Hallelujah. They are pulling in. They're saying they're going to walk in God. They're walking in God. Oh, God, what are we going to do? There ain't nothing that I can
You know, the more of a stand that you take for God and you and people see that you're unmovable in that stand, the more they start realizing, hallelujah, my, what they have is real. They ain't letting nothing stop it. I can't even stop them anymore. I can't even whine and do this and that. I love my children with all my heart, my grandchildren. But I tell them real quick, hallelujah. I say, I love you with all my heart, and I put Jesus first. Hallelujah. And you're going to have to do this and that, and you're going to have to. I'm going to share this a little something. <laughs> I, I put a, a sign up on my door, and I put on there, I said, for me and this and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. I said, I love and respect you, now you love and respect me. Hallelujah. And these are the things that uh, I expect and that I do not allow here in the house. Hallelujah. we got to be protective. And I named them off. Hallelujah. And it seemed like it helped bring a change. It seemed like I wasn't having to, you know, keep coming up against that thing as much. Because, believe me, they will try you. To see if they can get away with things. You tell them they can't watch certain things. Before you know it, you'll be off praying or reading the Bible. And the next thing you know, you hear it through the house. And then you have to stop doing that. And you have to go and make them do different. <laughs> you know I don't allow that here. You know I don't. And I was carrying my grandchildren to meet their mama. One was listening to some worldly music through their earphones. And I said, what are you listening to? And one said, well, it don't matter. You can't hear it. I said, let me tell you something. I said, every square inch of this car belongs to me. And I said, I'm going to tell you something. I said, ain't none of you going to hell on my watch. On my watch. Hallelujah. And I said, what I require in the house, I require here in this car. Hallelujah. Everything I own, I require it. Hallelujah. You say, oh, you're just being overbearing. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. You know why? Because I love him. I love him more than anything in my life. And I love my children and my grandchildren more than life itself. And I would lay my life down before them anytime. If harm way was coming to them, I would stand between them and harm's way. And I wouldn't even think about it. Hallelujah. But that's how much I love my Lord. And I guarantee if you'll put Jesus first in your life and let that standard be raised. See, people have let down the standard. That's the reason their journey in God has come to a halt. God can only keep increasing you from glory to glory, strength to strength, and faith to faith. If you'll pull that standard up in your home, in your life foremost. In your life and then in your home. In every situation. It is like my grandfather, Pops. He went to church when it was church time. It didn't make no difference if somebody drove a long way. He said, you're more than welcome. He said, but I'm going to church. He said, you can either come with me or come back another time. He didn't let nothing hinder him. He said, now I'd love for you to come on to church. You come to church with me. And, you know, sometimes they wouldn't. they just go on back home. But I tell you what, he had a standard that he helped to. And he didn't allow foolishness to go on either. I mean, he was a devout man of God. And, and I tell you what, I was just a young child when they passed away. I was about somewhere between six and seven years old. But their stand in God made such a profound impact in my life, such a young life, that I remember it today. That's what I remember about them. Not only their love for me, but their love for God. My goodness, it just... And and sometimes we think we're not even having an impact on our children, our grandchildren. But it's how you live for God is what does the impact. It ain't what you say with your mouth and do otherwise. It's what you say from your mouth and your heart and that you do. If we are here only, we deceive our own self. But we've got to become doers of this work. That's how you move from each stage in your journey. And grow in God and come to. 
Let me go. It ain't sin. Let me see where am I at. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. It's in it. And besides this, give it all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge. So he's telling your next stage to go to knowledge. Start seeking for the knowledge of God. Start seeking for the wisdom of God. And with all you're getting, get understanding. Start praying for wisdom. Start praying for knowledge and understanding. Hallelujah. If you, you can gain all the wisdom and knowledge that's ever been in God. If you don't have the understanding how to, to grasp it, if you don't have the understanding how to deliver it to others, it does you no good. So that's the reason he said, with all thy getting, get understanding. Hallelujah. And then it goes on and it says, once you're adding knowledge to you, then add temperance. That means self-control. Control your spirit. Don't let your spirit just do whatever it wants to do. If someone comes up and says something awful to you, don't do like flesh would do and strike back out, out against them. Hallelujah. But control that spirit and speak to them in Jesus. So they're moving in stages. They're moving from virtue to knowledge to temperance. And as you're working on temperance, then patience. <laughs> Woo. When you start praying for patience too, you better look out. Because <laughs> I tell you what, all hell is going to break loose just to see if you're going to have patience. <laughs> but I tell you what, if you'll walk through that thing with patience, Say, Lord, I don't care if you feel like you're fixing to lose it all. If you'll just gather yourself real quick. That's what that temperance comes in for. And it gives you self-control. And you say, Lord, my patience, it wants to give off with me. <laughs> it wants to give out. But Lord, take your time in a minute and gather yourself. Lord, I'm giving this over to you. Father, let my patience come forth in me. And then you show patience. Hallelujah. And he'll give you the ability to do it. And as you exercise your patience, he said, then the godliness. What does godliness mean? It just means just living right. Living godly in Christ Jesus. That means love your neighbor as yourself. Do good to them that despitefully use you. When they smack you on one side of the face, turn the other cheek. That's what godliness is. is living by the word of God and becoming Christ-like. Hallelujah. He don't leave nothing else here. And he said, And to godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, charity. Now listen to what he says. As you're maturing in these things, and you will, you'll come forth in different measures in different one of those levels. You'll start putting on more purity. You'll start putting on more knowledge. And you'll come forth in stages in these things as you're growing Hallelujah. But listen to what happens as you're gaining ground in each one of these stages of your journey. It said, if these things be in you, that means that they're exercising in you. They are being produced in you. And abound. Abound. That means that you're flourishing. They make you that you are neither be barren. What is he talking about? You will not be barren Hallelujah, about bringing souls into the kingdom. You will be birthing forth souls into the kingdom of God. What? Through Jesus Christ that's in you. He is the one that's doing. Hallelujah. And it goes on and says, nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. You will not be unfruitful. You will bear forth the fruits of his knowledge. He said, but he now, if you like any of these things as you're gaining them in your journey, see, that's the reason we need to be thoughtful and care, have diligence, be mindful of what's going on in our journey, in our walk with God. And as we become mindful of what we're doing and making sure that each one of these areas are growing and maturing, then we're able to get more knowledge, more knowledge, hallelujah, more meat that we can feast upon. And that's what the Lord church has been perfected. Amen. It's not coming back for a baby church. Hallelujah.
But he said, if you lack these things, what? Then what? You're blind. You're spiritually blind. And you cannot see afar off. That means you can't help yourself or nobody else. Because when you are blind and cannot see afar off, what does that do? It puts you in a, a jailhouse like. It binds you up. Because you can't see how to help yourself and you can't see how to help others. You cannot see afar off. Hallelujah. But if we'll stay fruitful, hallelujah, and let God move us through these stages and gain access to them deeper and deeper and deeper as we press on in God. But he says right here, they cannot see afar off and had forgotten that they were what? Purged from his old sins. What does that mean? That means they're picking up their way. Their sins of their life. They're picking up the things that they once laid down. Amen. They're blind. They cannot see afar off. And they have forgotten that they were purged from their old sins. It said, wherefore, the rather brethren, give diligence. Be careful to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. Amen. Hallelujah. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly. He said an entrance. What is he talking about? An entrance into God in a deeper level. Mm. <coughs> Excuse me. Into a different level. Mm -hmm. A deeper level. Hallelujah. Ministered unto you abundantly in the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. My, my, my. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance. See, Paul was all the time reminding them. He don't care if they've heard him preach out a thousand times. It don't make no difference. I'm bringing your mind into remembrance. Not that you don't know the truth. Not that you have not ever heard it before. Yeah, but I'm bringing it back to your remembrance. Amen. Because if I do that, then it stirs you up. Listen to what he says right here. That he wasn't going to be negligent of it. That means he was going to be mindful and make sure that he does it. Hallelujah. To put you always in remembrance of these things. Though you know them and be established in the present truth. See, he said you know them. Hallelujah. But I'm going to bring them back to your remembrance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it means as long as I am in this tabernacle. To stir you up. That's why I'm going to bring it to your remembrance. That's the reason I get up here in this pulpit and I'm continually bringing things back to your remembrance, making sure that you don't let anything grab a hold of that word that's been given unto you because the devil is always there trying to grab a hold of the word that's been delivered to you. Amen. Hallelujah. And it goes on and says, Hallelujah. Yeah, I think it means as long as I am in this tabernacle. He's talking about in his body. To stir you up by putting you in remembrance. Because he knew shortly that he was going to be putting off his tabernacle. Mm -hmm. He said, knowing that shortly I must put off this, my tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ has shown me. In other words, he said, the Lord Jesus Christ has shown me I'm fixing to give my life for him. Mm -hmm. He's going to deliver me up before rulers and kings. And I'm going to share his name. Hallelujah. And then, praise God, he's taking me on home. <laughs> you suffer like Paul suffered. You get a desire to go on. I'm telling you. And, but the love for people and the love for God keeps you wanting to stay here for their sake as well. But yet, when you keep suffering like most men and women of God do, my goodness, you start thinking, God, Lord, it would be so heavenly to be with you. But I want to read this right here. Hallelujah. In Psalms, it tells us the meek will be, the meek he will guide in judgment, and the meek he will teach his ways. And Psalms 48 and 14. For this God is our God forever and ever. He will be our God even unto death. That means he will guide you in everything that you put your step to if you'll hear his voice. And let him order your steps. He will guide you. Hallelujah. Even unto death. Just like Paul was 
talking about. The Lord has showed me I'm fixing to put off this tabernacle. But as long as I'm here in this tabernacle, I am going to bring you the word of God, the whole council. Hallelujah. He said in another verse, he said, I preach this day and night. Hallelujah. Even we better to bring you the whole council of God. Amen. That you don't go like it in anything. Amen. Psalm 73 and 24. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel. And afterward, receive me to glory. See, the Lord, he guides us in his counsel. We all the time are seeking counsel of the Lord. Hallelujah. And if we'll hear his voice and go as he guides us. My, my, my. I tell you, there ain't no good thing that he would withhold from you. Not one thing. Amen. Only thing that sometimes we let our own flesh rob us. Of the glory of God. And rob us from where God's wanting to take us. Amen. If we'll get that old thing out of the way. Get it under subjection. Mm -hmm. And get it mortified and killed out. That's the reason I think every Christian ought to study Romans 8. Chapter 8. Mm -hmm. Frontwards and backwards. Word by word. Amen. Letter by letter. And let them see how important it is to kill out this old flesh man. Talking about the deeds of the old flesh. Amen. Hallelujah. Because it cannot be brought subject to the Spirit of God, and neither indeed can be. So it has to be killed out. So God ain't trying to save this old flesh. <laughs> I know many, they think, you know, many in times past thought that God was trying to perfect this old flesh. No. The Spirit's what He's perfecting. The Spirit in us, the soul in us. Hallelujah. That's what He's perfecting in us and bringing us forth in His fullness. Is it Isaiah 42 and 16. Y'all can write these down and then you can look it up later and study them out. I will bring the blind by a way that they knew not. We all was once blind. We were all once blind, but God opened our eyes that we could see. Amen. He said, I will lead them in paths that they have not known. Oh my goodness. Oh, isn't that true? My, my, my. He said, I will make darkness light before them. And crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them. And not forsake them. Mama, my, 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 mama. If you could just truly realize. The depth that God wants to take each one of us in. I'm continually seeking for deeper depths and higher heights. My, my, my. I, I, you know there's a desire in my heart to walk as any one. There's a desire in my heart to walk as Elijah walked. Hallelujah. To be so close to God. Mm -hmm. To know Him. My, my, I'm talking about truly know Him. Amen. In all His ways and all His thoughts. Them that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. First, Samuel 2 and 26. And the child Samuel grew on and was in favor both with the Lord. With men and the Lord. Hallelujah. I was going to expound on Samuel and Abraham and David and different ones. But you can do that on your own and see how their journeys in the in the Lord were. I ain't talking about their journeys in the natural. I'm talking about their journeys in God, in the spirit. And it will help you. It will build you up to show you that God takes time to work with us. Amen. He's working on a building. Woo! <laughs> He's working on a building. My, my, my. And if God builds the building, then the building is not built in vain. My, my, my. Oh, I love him. Hallelujah. And John the Baptist, you can learn out his journey. Hallelujah. And how he walked in God. Luke 1 and 8. And the child grew and waxed strong in the spirit and was in the deserts until the day of his showing unto Israel. That's talking about John the Baptist. Hallelujah. The Lord kept him secluded. He was in the desert. Amen. But when it come time for him to go forth <laughs> and start preparing the way of the Lord Jesus Christ. Woo! He come out of the wilderness like a crazy man. Amen. Eating locusts and wild honey. Girded about with a girdle of fur. If <laughs> you know, he probably looked like a wild man. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. But I tell you what. <laughs> I'm not saying he looked like a wild man, but in reality, but probably some perceived him as that way. Because a lot of times if you're different than they are, they think you're strange. <laughs> and well, you know, 
Lord, let me be strange in you, as long as it's in righteousness. <laughs> Your righteousness, Father. Not that I want to have people to uh, reject, because I'm all the time wanting the people to receive the Lord Jesus Christ and what He has put in me. And, 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 and you've got to realize what God puts in you. There's In the Minor Prophets, He was telling the people uh, of what God has put down in Him. And you've got to know it for yourself as part of your journey. Mm -hmm. It's realizing the ministry that God has put in you. Mm -hmm. And learning that ministry. Learning. Let God teach you. Let God bring you forth in it. And I tell you what, the more you let Him teach you and guide you in, the more confidence that you'll have. And I tell you what, you'll walk in a lion's den if God told you to. <laughs> Hallelujah. You go in a viper pit if God told you to. And you'd know that you wouldn't be in harm's way. Because God is there to keep us and protect us. Hallelujah. You can go ahead and cut that off. I, I tell you what, I appreciate the Lord today.